Hi and welcome back. I'm Caroline Best of the Dow Horsemanship. I'm here today with my two and a half year old Blue behind me, my big 18 hand sport horse Frisian Zor, and Lovey, my thoroughbred mare. See, Zor's 11 and Lovey is 10. Today we're going to be talking about pushy horse behavior in understanding your horse's perspective, part one. Let me ask you this. How many times have you been told to not allow your horse, young or old, into your space? Or worse yet, don't allow them to crowd you or push on you? What if I were to tell you this is normal behavior for horses and part of how they figure out where they belong in a herd dynamic, including the dynamic you have with them? What if I were to tell you that they are expressing themselves, communicating and showing you who they are, what they like and what they don't like? And what if I were to tell you that your horse needs an education? Basically, if you don't like it, then you're the one that needs to teach them what's acceptable behavior to you, for you, and what's not. In any situation, the horse never deserves the level of backlash given by others telling you to punish them for their lack of respect. This has got to stop. And you don't have to allow pushy behavior either. It's not that black and white, you guys. And that's why I'm gonna talk more about it. So stay with me while I explain what's really going on and how to handle or correct pushy horse behavior. Before I get into detail, I'd like to mention that I've studied wild horse herds and worked with wild horses. In addition, I have created healthy domesticated herds where their natural social instincts have been allowed to govern their survival instincts. And this is really key. My natural domesticated herds have become harmonious, peaceful, where they all get along and contribute and share in partnership and leadership. I have a lot of years and a lot of experience understanding individual and herd behavior and dynamics as well as personality types. And again, I can't emphasize enough how we need to start thinking outside the box, less in a linear mode and non-linearly. Like, why? Ask the question, why? Why does my horse do what they do? So we've all experienced horses that crowd our space, push into us, walk through us as if they don't even see us, and even run into us, especially young horses. They will push into you, crowd your personal space, even step on you. They often bite and nip too, and spaz out on the end of your lead rope when you're leading them or handling them. I bet most of you didn't know that this is normal behavior, that this is part of how they learn about boundaries. Again, what's acceptable and what's not. It's also similar to pecking order, how they figure out how to fit in, belong in the community, and figure out how they need to contribute. Yes, that's right. All intelligent social species, including horses, are hardwired to cooperate and contribute to the overall well-being and welfare of the herd of the community. This is critical to their survival as a group, as a herd, and as a species. And it's also part of what innately drives them to seek partnership. So we've already talked about how pushy young horses are especially. Did you know that it's instinctive? It's normal. This is the age where young horses begin figuring out the hierarchy, where they fit in. They begin testing the waters. And this usually will go on until the age of two or three. And if a horse hasn't been properly socialized by other horses, either in a wild or healthy domesticated herd dynamic, and if they haven't been properly socialized by us, they'll never learn this. And that's why you see older horses, pushy, running into you, running you down, running through you, and crowding your space. A lot of times, most of the time, it's because they were never properly socialized. This wasn't taught to them naturally, by other horses and by humans living in our world. So this is why in my training with young horses up until the age of three, I call it 
training the terrible twos. And I understand that they're gonna be pushy the entire time, up until the age of two or three, especially if, if I've had them um, as a weanling. It's important, it's just part of nature, it's just like being a, a human teenager. You're gonna keep pushing those boundaries and keep pushing them for a matter of time until you just mature, grow out of it. But what's important is whether it's from the horse's healthy social dynamic with other horses that helps teach them or you being that dynamic, we need consistency and repetition. And we need to be fair. We need to try and understand why this happens and especially when we have older horses that have just never been properly handled or taught. See, hierarchy for horses helps them socialize. It helps them govern, keep order more easily. And often hierarchy is shared between two or more horses. Meaning if one of the herd members is not being respected, such as the lead mare in the wild, who it's her role to help find um, forage and water and sometimes shelter or better ground for the herd, it's up to her. So if she finds water first, she usually takes the first drink and then she and the lead stallion kind of watch out for everybody from for predators because everybody else needs to drink too so if she's not being respected other members which are mostly they're all mares band of mares will come in and support her and or the lead stallion but it's usually the band of mares the matriarch the matriarchs they're raising the young so they all work together it's pretty amazing to be able to watch this. This is where partnership is more important to horses than leadership, but they need both. And they need leaders who have the most experience and make the best decisions for the general welfare and survival of the herd. Leadership is not about dominance or alpha at all. So where does it go wrong for horses? Meaning why are so many of our horses pushy, misunderstood, mislabeled as pushy? Intelligent, social, species, including horses. This is good for you guys to see because he could have run me down because Lovey was bossing him, but he felt me with steady pressure and he respected it. And there we go. But this is part of it. And when I work with Blue more, I don't do that much work with my baby, my young horse. He's had enough handling and leading. He's had a little bit of work in here, enough to understand, especially on a daily basis, what's acceptable behavior. That's why he didn't run me down. How many of you could have been in that position and your horse would have just totally run right over you? And this is a two and a half year old that has minimal training. However, he does have a lot of handling. He's handled consistently the same all the time. So he does understand rhythmic pressure and he does understand steady pressure when I make contact like I did then. But he still tries to come out of his stall and push through me. He got Rammy on the end of the lead rope when I was walking all three of them into the round pen. He got Rammy and I had to correct him many times. But correcting him was just showing him where he belonged. Putting him back in his place, it wasn't punishing him. See, I had to teach him all of this. This is why I brought these three, specifically these three instead of the other seven in here because I thought it would be, they're the best. You have one of the most dominant horses there who's really pushy and lazy. You have sensitive here who's really bossy with the baby. And then you have the baby who's in the terrible twos right now. So most horses are taken away from their mothers way too young. While it's the norm for humans to wean foals as early as five months, foals can suckle until two years of age in the wild. This allows a foal to get the proper amount of nutrients from its mother and to learn socially acceptable behaviors, form friendships, autonomy from its mom, and figure out where it fits in in the hierarchy. Taking young foals away before the ages of one year, minimum one year, traumatizes them, you guys. It creates displaced behavior such as insecurity, which shows up in buddy sour, food aggression, cribbing, ulcers, hypervigilance, and social misconduct, such as aggression and excessive pushy behavior. So why, you might ask? Because as I mentioned above, horses need a healthy mom, baby horses, 
and a community to help guide them and show them how to act. This is so important to a social species. As the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, this holds true for horses. They rely on the herd dynamics community to help raise the young, all of them, and guide them into developing healthy relationships. So see, young horses are allowed to be pushy. They are also guided by their herd members, so they learn what is acceptable and what is not. And every herd member is an individual. So what's interesting is while Lovey allows Zor to groom her, she won't allow the baby. I mean, they form their own friendships and they form their own dynamics. Lovey is an amazing big sister and surrogate mother to the little baby, Blue. She may never let him groom her. I don't know, but right now she won't. Hi, sweet girl. So when I say what is not acceptable, it doesn't mean that they're never allowed to be pushy. And everybody has a different dynamic with each other. It's not all the same. Horses are not like humans and they don't view pushy behavior like we do. While the young are guided, they're also allowed to be who they are. And that means that if a foal is more assertive and dominant than an adult, they may be allowed to assert themselves over that adult and or they might get scolded. Good boy. It just really depends. It depends on individual personality types and that herd's particular social dynamic. Just like a clique of people, a clique of friends. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? In the end, a more dominant horse in the wild doesn't mean they're aggressive or selfish. Wild horse herds and social behaviors are quite different than most of our domesticated herds. There are two especially important roles in the survival and well-being of a healthy wild herd, community and cooperation. Cooperation means partnership and the overall welfare and well-being of the herd, which takes leadership. Before you get ready to act and do something about your horse's pushy behavior, please try and understand why first. This is so important to your relationship with your horse. Knowing how to handle it, what action to take, or strategy to use first will not only help your relationship, it will be teaching, you will be teaching your horse versus punishing them. Tune in next week for part two when I will discuss but demonstrate how to assess, how do we assess pushy behavior? Because a lot of you don't know and you don't know where your horses come from. So how, where's your barometer, so to speak? How do you gauge what's too pushy for you? What's acceptable? We're gonna talk all about that in the next video. And then we're gonna learn a couple of exercises that you've already seen me apply, especially with my young horse, to help guide them and teach them that this is your space. You're the one that decides when the horse can come in and how the horse comes in. If you'd like to learn the how-to step-by-step for all of this, start your horse and finish your horse from the ground to riding. Take a look at my Mastery Membership Riding Foundation program. It has it all. Thank you and may you always be one with your horse.